God, that he said, God, what if only ten righteous people were there? Would you spare them? And God said, I will spare them for ten. Even though there were ten, there was one. But then he grew, Abraham grew and matured to the point where God said, you know what? I made a promise that all nations would be blessed through you and it would be through the son of promise in your old age, Isaac. And I want you to sacrifice him for me. And Abraham obeyed God, put him on the altar, raised up his knife. And how much faith would it take? The Hebrew writer makes note that Abraham had so much faith that he believed that God would have brought him back to life. Because Abraham knew God keeps his covenant. He keeps his promises. When he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. And so if he says that all these are going to be blessed through Isaac, then the only reason if I kill him, then God will have to raise him up in order to fulfill his promise. I mean, he understood and trusted God's nature and his promises and his understanding just grew to the point where he was willing to do whatever God says. I want to grow to be that point. Hopefully I won't be that when I'm over 100 years old because I don't know if I will be. But I want to grow to be that point. Now it's easy to say that we trust God, but I want us to ask, do we truly trust God? Because for me, I can tell you, I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. But I want to ask, because it's so easy to say. I want to ask you a few questions, just, and I want to do this, and I, I want to challenge your thinking before we hit some scripture. Because, I want, because a lot of times people say, oh yeah, I trust God. But I want to ask, do you really trust God with your life? Because it's something that you're really going to have to be able to answer. I mean, how many of you trust the fact that God loves you? You know, a lot of us say, oh, yeah, God loves me. But then when times go bad, oh, I'm angry at you. God, why did you do that? Oh, you don't care about me. No one loves me. You know? But do you actually believe, no, no matter circumstances, no matter what happens, God loves you. He loved you so much, he gave up Jesus to die for you. That should be evidence that he's willing to love you no matter what. What about, do you trust the fact that he is wise? You know, one of the things that we have a problem with is that we get this mentality that we know better than God. That we pray to God and say, okay, God, here's my agenda, here's my plan, here's my uh, church business plan, whatever it may be. Now, if you just bless that, then everything will be great. And then things don't go our way. And then we're thinking, well, God doesn't know what he's doing. And I'm just thinking, wait a minute. Who lived forever? I mean, who's the one who has all knowledge? Who's the one? I mean, even Job was the greatest man, and even God sarcastically looked at Job and said, were you here when I created the world? Yeah, I didn't think so. I mean, I just think about that, and I think, you know what, sometimes we have to trust God. Even when the world says, okay, here's worldly wisdom, this is what I want you to do. And do we follow that wisdom? Or do we trust in God's wisdom? What about His power? A lot of times we don't think God is powerful. You know, now to him who, can, who is able to do more than we can ask or imagine according to his power. I know, I love that passage, but I, I struggle with that one because I don't always take God at his word on that. I'm working on that. But do I honestly believe that we can do what he desires by his power? A lot of times we make excuses. Well, I'm just too tired. I don't have time. Uh, you know, we're a small church. We don't have the money for that. Uh, someone else can do it, you know? But do we trust, you know, it's saying, you know what? We are the most powerful people on earth because we are Christ's church. We can do it. I mean, do we trust that? You see, one of the things that we understand is that there's two ways to live life. You know, like, there's a pattern that we have to talk about, a biblical pattern to do things. But there's also a worldly pattern. Paul says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12, 2. But now, we think about that, and, it, and I just think, you know what? There's a pattern that the world teaches you. And there's a pattern that the world says, this is how you live life. This is wisdom. This is what you should be doing. But do we, do we trust that humanly wisdom and try to do what all the worldly wisdom and Oprah tells us to do? You know? 
listen to Dr. Phil. How are you guys doing today? Okay, bad. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. Or do we take, trust God and say, you know what? Walk as Jesus walked, as Peter tells us to do. Because that's the path. <clears throat> that's a hard thing to do. And then say, you know what? It's going to trust. It's going to take trust as Jesus trusted God that he would rise him on the third day. That took trust. Has Jesus ever experienced death before? No. He had to trust God that he would raise him up. You see, in meditation and reflection of my life, I realized that it's the times that I trusted God the most is those times that I grew the most. Because spiritual growth, growth really parallels your growth in trusting God in faith. And that is a hard thing to do. But if you do the hard things, the things that Scripture teaches us to do, if we do what Jesus had done, those are the times we grow. But do you know when I spiritually have fallen and hurt and tumbled the most? It's the times that I didn't trust God. You know, it's, it's those times where I said, you know what, God, I don't need you. I, I, I can handle this. I'm tough enough. You know what, God helps those who help themselves. Well, I don't remember reading that in the Bible. Because we're supposed to go to him. But, but one of the things that we have to understand is if we trust in God's nature, his character, everything that God has revealed about himself in the Bible, why would we not trust him? Because one of the things, the first promises that God gave in Genesis 3.15 is that he was going to send one who was going to crush Satan's head. Now, well, who, now did, did God fulfill that promise? Yes. And who did he fulfill it through? Jesus Christ, at the expense of his own son. And so when I think about that, I look at that and think, you know what, if God is willing to send Jesus to do that for me, then I have no reason to doubt that he won't do what he else he says in his word. Because the, the biggest thing he could have done is really saying, you know what, I'm going to give you Jesus. And that's exactly what he did. I mean, how do we build trust with people? Honestly, how do we build trust with people? We build a relationship with people, and after time, and after witnessing, and seeing the legitimacy of that person, we trust them. God has given us all of our lives and all of, all of human existence to say, you know what? I've always done what I said I would do. I've always remained being perfect, and godly, and holy. Why, why do you doubt my entrance? Why do you worry? Why do you fear? Trust me. And I just think about that. And I, I thought about it for a moment. And I spent some time thinking over my life. And I was thinking, you know, God has never really given me a reason to doubt him. There were times in my life that were hard. There were times where things weren't always the best. But guess what? I'm still here. And you know what? In hindsight, so many of those things that I thought were so horrible, I think were actually some of the most life-changing, altering things in my life. Thank you, John. You're an encourager. But I just think about that. And then I think about King David. And I think about King David, and I just thought, why did he have a man after God's own heart? Why is it that he was so godly? I believe a lot of it had to do with the fact that he trusted God. Didn't he trust God when he went up against Goliath? Yeah, even at a young age. And that continued on. I want you to turn your Bibles to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. We're going to learn some wisdom from David and his son today. Psalm 37. And I love this passage of Scripture because it just reveals his, David's heart. Psalm 37. We're going to focus on the first six verses. It says this. Of David, do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will die away. <laughs> Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. I just love that because one of the things that I think about is why do we have a hard time trusting God? And honestly, a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's because we're jealous and envious of people.